Welcome to another video by Pharos Technology. Today we're going to talk about blockchain for business and the five main features that it needs to have for business to get the full benefit out of blockchain and what blockchain has to offer. The idea of blockchain is simply that it creates a trustless environment. And that doesn't mean that you can't trust it. It means that you don't have to worry about the trust between parties when you're doing business between parties. What that really means is that instead of having a third party intermediary like a bank or a fiduciary of some sort to enable the transaction to prove that the other person is being honest and trustworthy, you can then engage in a blockchain where the software will take care of the validation of who the other party is that you're working with. So in order to get that level of benefit out of blockchain, there needs to be five basic features. Now, the first feature is distribution. Distribution is the fact that participants are separate from each other. Participant are in, participants are in disparate geographical locations. It's not all housed in a single data warehouse. Each participant member within the blockchain runs their own node or their own software that validates all the transactions that are happening in the network. They also run the consensus algorithm. algorithm. Now the consensus algorithm is the thing that makes a trustless environment work. It is the rules, it are, it, they are the rules that are established within the blockchain in order to validate that each person is a true and legitimate member of the blockchain and has validated that, that each member can do business with them. It also validates that when a transaction is performed, it makes sure that that transaction is valid according to the rules uh, within the blockchain. Now, any participant on that blockchain can review the data. Now, if you're not given permission to see what the actual data is, then you can't see the detail behind the data, but you can see all the transactions that are happening. If I can use the example of Bitcoin to show this, each node is a miner. And we've, we've heard of mining Bitcoin as though you're mining gold. So each Bitcoin miner adds to the transactions on the, on the ledger. Each Bitcoin miner then validates that the transaction is legitimate as it puts them into blocks. Each block is then encrypted to make sure that no, no data inside that block can be tampered with. Now, each node runs the consensus algorithm, is separate one another from one another. It can be in separate geographical locations. And in fact, they are. Um, I happen to run some miners right now that, that validate transactions and I get uh, paid through a mining pool for providing the computing resources. Each node on the network would then provide the benefit to all the network for validating and making sure that the network keeps working. Okay. Now, so that's the first item, distribution. The second item we want to talk about then is tokenization. Now tokens are relatively simple to explain. You have tokens when you fly on United Airlines, for example, and get frequent flyer miles. Each one of those miles is a token. It has a certain amount of value to you. It, that, those tokens, when they build up to a certain amount, of course, you can buy a ticket to go to a place that if you have enough tokens, you can go ahead and go to a place that you desire to buy a ticket for. So with that simple example, you can see that tokens are an object of value on a blockchain network. It's not always a one for one value, like one token equals a certain amount all the time. A token be, can be a bit of information. A token can be a username and password and validation about who the user is. A token can also be rules that are established within the blockchain in order to accomplish a certain task within the blockchain. So tokenization is very, very important in that 
the tokens of value can then provide benefits to the people who do work on the network and carry a full node on the network and then get, um, get paid back in tokens that have value in order to pay for the amount of work that they do or the amount of computing effort or resources that they supply to the network. But it, it can also be bits of information, such as the amount of a painting that you own, for example. The, the, let's say that you like to invest in art, but you don't have $5 billion or whatever it costs for a Van Gogh. Well, what it means then is that you can own part of the Van Gogh painting, and that token will represent a percentage of the value of that painting. A token could be a real estate contract. It could be ownership in a particular piece of real estate. On and on, tokenization basically means that it represents value on the blockchain network. So tokenization is a very important key, and it's our second item of importance within the blockchain. The next is immutability. Immutability means the inability to go change the data that has already been recorded onto the blockchain ledger. Just like transactions in an accounting system are supposed to be just records of what did happen and shouldn't be changed, these records are immutable on a blockchain in the respect that once they're recorded, they cannot be changed. So when the consensus algorithm is run by each node and the record is put into a block and then the block is encrypted and put in its chain, those records cannot be changed. Now, here's where when somebody refers to a blockchain as a database, they are really oversimplifying things because databases are meant to be transactional and can be changed. Blockchains are not a database. Blockchains are distributed ledgers of information, and they're distributed among the people who run full nodes on that network, not a database, not a database at all. Generally, you would expect to be a database, uh, a database to be in a data warehouse that belongs to a certain company. Blockchain is supposed to be distributed among several members who run nodes and would not be in a single data warehouse. So you, you see, except for the possible example of a distributed database, you can see that a blockchain is not really a database in the respect that it is supposed to be immutable and unchangeable. You would be able then to rely on going back into the records and being able to validate what occurred on a certain date at a certain time between two separate parties. This has a particularly strong applications when you're talking about auditability. When you're looking at maybe a government contract or a government audit that they need to perform because you're doing work for the government or an audit, audit that can be performed on your accounting ledger. If your accounting ledger is part of a blockchain and it is immutable, it's been locked down the way a blockchain is supposed to, it can then provide a strong record for any auditing company to come in and validate that your, that your transactions have been legal and legitimate. So immutability is our third piece. Of the, of the blockchain. Now our fourth piece of the blockchain is encryption. In order to obtain immutability, there needs to be encryption. And encryption is there simply to make sure that once a transaction is recorded, that it stays recorded. A blockchain encrypts each transaction as well as the block in general and the chain has a link between them that are both encrypted where the where the next block refers to the other chain and that reference and, and information is also encrypted as part of the data in that block. In order to go back and change information, you have to then be able to go back and recompute the hashtag 
that belongs to that block and then change the reference in the succeeding block in order to make sure that the blocks stay chained together. The compute, the raw computing power that it takes to do that is, is very next to impossible. Now, encryption will, may have to change when the era of quantum computer be, computing becomes a reality, and they're already looking into ways that um, encryption can happen in the era of quantum computing. But at this point, the encryption that we have today can't be broken once several blocks have been put in place and the records have already been recorded. So encryption then is our fourth item. Now the last item, the number five, is probably the most difficult for businesses to implement, at least in the short term. Uh, a Gartner study uh, said that we probably won't see this last one until probably the year 2025 at best, because it'll take business a while to adapt and understand what blockchains can do and what the benefits are. And that is decentralization. What decentralization means, and it's the capstone of everything on a block, uh, in the blockchain community now, is that no single entity controls all the computers, the data and information, and sets all the rules. So no single entity owns the data, owns the network, or sets all the rules. And I repeated that just so that you can catch the gravity of what it is. Let's say you're a company that works in whatever industry. The challenge with doing business with a competitor would be pretty difficult if you really didn't understand that blockchains have all the other previous features that I talked about, the other four. With all the other four means you can have trusted data, you can have data that is, is kept confidential between you and just your set of data, but it also gives you the ability to do business with even a competitor and be able to trust that they are being honest and trustworthy in the transactions that you're performing with them. Now, this is a feature that is really, really important. We have a, a company called uh, Maersk who implemented a, a blockchain in, um, with IBM called TradeLens. And if you wanna go look that up, tradelens.org, you can go see the, uh, the reference to that. Basically, Maersk is the only major shipping company involved in it. And the reason is that Maersk owns the blockchain so it's not decentralized. Since Maersk owns the blockchain and Maersk sets the rules and does all of the coding with IBM as their partner, no other company has been willing to join that that competes with Maersk. And until Maersk can get to the point where it can decentralize a blockchain like TradeLens, you won't find commonality between all of the different companies out there. And so the challenge with decentralization is getting to the point of trusting not only your suppliers and your trusted partners, but also trusting that your competitors can operate in the same environment and put your data there with the idea that it would remain confidential, but then it's not because Maersk, for example, owns the data. So we're gonna get there. And if, if the full uh, benefit of blockchain is to be realized, um, and for example, if all the shipping lines in all the world were able to do their work in one blockchain, how much simpler and easier would it be for all the shipping ports of entry and all the trade and customs agencies if they had one big package of software that they could work with that was distributed. And no matter whether you're a Maersk Trade Lines or a Hapa Gloyd or other major shipping line, it wouldn't matter which shipping line you represented, you'd still be able to tap into the same software and open it up and use it in the same way. Trade Lens is a sweet piece of software. It really is neat what they've done in order to 
in order to streamline their operations. The challenge is if that one piece of software could be used by everybody, it'd be, it would be really good, but we're not there yet. Remember, those five items are important and critical to get full benefit out of blockchains. So hope you've enjoyed the video and hope to see you again. Thanks. I want to thank you so much for viewing this video. We have great content on, on the site and I'm putting more content out every single day. There's a link to one of them on the side of the screen over here. Also, please help me grow the channel by subscribing. So hit that subscribe button a little bit lower on the other side of the screen and hope to see you again. Thanks.